What's going on guys, Marijn here and welcome to the second episode of the Hybrid Aesthetics series. In the last episode, we did a push workout and today we're gonna do a pull workout in which we are targeting our entire back, rear delts and biceps. First, we do the same warm up as on our push day, dynamically warming up our upper and our lower body. We start off with one of my favorite exercises of all time. And I would give this a lot of credit for building my lats. The weighted pull up, you know, if you've been here for years. Progressive overload is crucial for muscle growth and strength. And by gradually increasing the weight attached to your body, this is the perfect compound lift for your back to focus on. It also builds functional strength, mimicking real life movements, such as climbing, lifting objects, or pulling yourself up over obstacles. Before doing your warm up sets, make sure to properly warm up by doing body weight reps and adding a smaller percentage of the weight you're gonna do. I recommend at least three warm up sets. If you're doing body weight pull ups, you can warm up with lat pull downs working towards your body weight. Grab the pull up bar with an overhand grip, palms facing away from you with your hands slightly wider than your shoulder width apart. Your arms should be fully extended in the beginning. I personally like to use straps since this will take the limited strength of my forearms out of the picture since the main purpose here is targeting our back and going as heavy as we can. Hang from the bar with your arms fully extended and your feet off the ground. Keep your body straight, engage your core, and avoid swinging or kipping movements. Unless you're a crossfitter, of course, but I hope not. Just kidding. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, pull yourself up towards the bar by bending your elbows and bringing your chest towards the bar while engaging your lats. Continue pulling until your chin is above the bar or reaches the same level as the bar. Your elbows should be fully bent at the top of the movement. Now lower yourself back down to the starting position with control. Weighted pull-ups are an advanced exercise, so if you're new to pull-ups or strength training, start with assisted pull-ups, banded pull-ups, or bodyweight pull-ups, and gradually progress to the weighted version once you can do 10 bodyweight pull-ups. The second exercise is the chest-supported machine row. This exercise is great because it takes out all of the momentum which you could have on a barbell row, dumbbell row, or a cable row, for example. We perform this exercise unilateral, so one arm at a time, to make sure both sides of our back are growing equally for perfect symmetry and aesthetics. Using a neutral grip here, since we already did an overhand grip on the pull-ups. Switching up grips can help with hitting all the muscle fibers in the back and therefore stimulating more growth. Neutral grips specifically can be beneficial if you experience shoulder discomfort and forearm pain such as golfer's elbow. I'm not using straps here since I only do so on the main compound lift of the day where the focus lies on moving as much weight as possible. It's important to also train without straps, to stay functional and to work on your forearm and grip strength. What's important here is getting the full stretch and pulling with your arm close to your body, focusing on driving the weight with your elbow and imagining using your hand as a hook. If you have a hard time doing this, try putting your thumb over the bar. If your gym does not have this machine, a good alternative would be chest supported dumbbell rows on an incline bench. The way to pull up has more emphasis on the lats and the row has more emphasis on the rhomboids, so your mid back and traps. By the way, if at any time during the series you're wondering where my sick outfits are from, all the gym clothes in every video are from Alphalete and with code Moran you get a 10% discount on all their items. Next up is a more functional exercise, the ring row. But don't get it twisted. This one is not easy and it will challenge you for sure. If you've been doing the same bodybuilding exercises for years like I have, this one will humble you and the shaking will be real in the beginning. One unique aspect of the ring row is the ability to adjust the exercise's difficulty by changing your body position. By modifying your foot placement and your body angle, you can increase or decrease the resistance. This makes it suitable for beginners and more advanced athletes. It's also relatively joint friendly and requires the activation of stabilizer muscles to maintain balance and control. This can lead to better fiber recruitment and functional strength. Set up a pair of gymnastic rings at an appropriate height. Stand facing the rings, hold the rings with an overhand grip and walk your feet forward until your body is at the right angle. Now keep your body straight, engage your core and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Pull your chest towards the rings by bending your elbows and retracting your shoulder blades. Twist your hands from an overhand grip to a neutral grip while performing the wrap. Hold for one second at the top and then lower yourself back down with control to the starting position. Now it's time for a finisher for our back. Similar technique as on our push day. Here we're gonna do a quasi isometric pull up. We're taking 30 to 60 seconds to complete one pull up. 
Now, if you're not able to do this, substitute it for an isometric ring row with the easiest variation of it and work your way up to a more difficult variation and the pull up from there. Back is finished and now it's time to hit our rear delts. This is an underrated muscle group, which is very important for your posture as a stabilizer, but also for aesthetics by giving the 3D look to your delts. The face will also help promote scapular retraction, which is an essential component of a healthy shoulder mechanic and posture. Many people tend to have imbalances in their upper body muscles due to the common habit of overdeveloping the chest and the anterior shoulder muscles, so your front delt, from exercises like bench press and push up, while neglecting the rear delt and upper back muscles. The face pool helps address these imbalances. And this is also why I don't do any isolation exercises for my front delts, such as front raises, and I haven't for about 10 years since they get enough indirect work from all the pushing exercises. Now we are doing a lying variation here. First, you grab a cable station, attach your rope and put it at a high angle. Grab the rope from underneath and point your thumb backwards. Lay down on the floor and pull where? Towards your face, of course, it's in the name. You can use your nose or eyes as a direction. The important thing on a face pull is to end with your hands behind your elbow because it ensures external rotation, which is what we're trying to accomplish here. Many people stop too early with their hands. This is why the lying variation is great because it gives you a clear endpoint for your hands, which is the floor. Your elbows are slightly elevated, rope makes contact with the floor, you squeeze there and come back up. We go a bit higher in reps here than on most exercises to ensure correct form and really focus on execution, slow controlled reps and mind muscle connection. Next, we move on to biceps. First exercise for biceps is the dumbbell preacher curl. On this exercise, we have strict execution with the arm locked in where there's no potential for swinging or raising your elbows while your shoulder remains in a flexed position. Leave your ego at home for this one because you cannot lift as much weight as with a standing girl, obviously. Sit on a preacher bench if your gym has one or simply do it on an incline bench like I am doing. Rest your upper arm on the angled pad of the preacher bench, allowing your arm to fully extend downward. This is important because most muscle fiber activation happens at the bottom part of this movement and many people don't extend, but mostly focus on the top part. Again, that's very nice for your ego, but you're not getting the best bang for your buck. You do not have to go all the way up to your shoulders as there is less muscle fiber recruitment and you might lose tension on your biceps. It's important to focus on squeezing your biceps and feeling it contract before slowly lowering the weight back down all the way to the end again. Second exercise for biceps is the standing hammer curl. These are performed with a neutral grip and have more emphasis on the brachialis. The brachialis lies underneath the biceps and helps to add thickness and size to your arms. I give these a lot of credit for the way my arms pop out from the side, even though I don't have very impressive bicep peak. The hammer curl also hits your forearms more and increases grip strength. Make sure your feet are about shoulder width apart, keep your core engaged, shoulders back and down and avoid swinging or using momentum to lift the weights, at least in the beginning. For the last set, once you get to a point of fatigue, you can use slight momentum to get an extra rep or two and go to complete failure. So you can take that ego from home and take it back just for this set. Since we are not working with very heavy weights, this is fine if you don't overdo it, of course. So just total failure for those last two reps. Next up are farmer walks. This is a great exercise for overall performance. It improves grip strength, core stability, conditioning, and can be done anywhere. It's a very functional exercise as it mimics real life tasks such as carrying heavy grocery bags, luggage, or moving objects. Start with a moderate weight that allows you to walk for 30 to 60 seconds without compromising your form. Grab some weights or kettlebells, stand tall with straight posture and a neutral spine. Begin walking at a moderate pace, keeping your steps steady and controlled. Keep your core engaged at all times, shoulders back and down. As you make progress, gradually increase the distance or duration, or obviously add more weight. Keep going until you truly go to failure and you cannot hold the weight anymore. It should slip out of your hands. This also builds mental resilience, since you can go longer than you might expect if you really push yourself. Get that inner David Goggins voice going. Yeah, no, Who's gonna carry the boats, the boats and the logs? And the logs! After these, I include some direct forearm work, and I believe this is beneficial for most of us since big forearms make your physique look a lot more outstanding, especially when wearing a t-shirt, and having a strong grip is useful for many lifts and in daily life. I grab a light dumbbell and do eight to 10 reps while sitting on the floor in front of a bench, palms down, leaning over, and once I have one rep left, I push myself
myself backwards, extend my arm and push out maximum reps, which is usually around the same reps, also eight to 10, since the weight distribution makes it lighter. That's it for this pool workout. We have two videos left of this complete series. If you'd like the entire eight week program, including the training principles, substitutions, more detailed explanations and the full training block put together in a complete guide, check out the link in description. If you have any questions for this specific workout, leave a comment and I'll reply. Click here to watch the first episode of the hybrid aesthetics series, the push workout if you haven't seen it yet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.